We're counting down the top 10 hottest games as of March 2019. Plus, we're going to take a look back at the very first games that this month's hottest board game publishers produced. Hey there! I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Board Game Geek, and welcome to this month's Top 10 Hottest Games Countdown, which is based on the titles that are generating the most traffic and discussion on the Board Game Geek website over the past 30 days. These games are tracked on the site's hottest games list, and the higher and longer a game remains on the list throughout the month, the higher it ranks on our Top 10. Now, there were 124 different board games that appeared on the list over the past 30 days, and we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 of them. And to be honest, the, the list didn't, didn't change very much over the last month this time. So instead of making my life easier by simply replaying last month's list, we're going to instead see where these hot publishers started out by taking a look at the very first games that they published as well. And speaking of starting out, let's start the countdown out with the game in spot number 10. Retaining its spot at number 10 this month is Architects of the West Kingdom by Garfield Games. In Architects of the West Kingdom, set at the end of the Carolingian Empire, players earn points by constructing various buildings and advancing the work on the Archbishop's Cathedral. To accomplish this, players may need to make some ethically questionable decisions along the way, but don't worry, performing a few underhanded deals may be okay, but push it too far, and cataclysmic retribution will be incurred. Architects of the West Kingdom by Garfield Games is holding steady in spot number 10. But how does it compare to one of their very first games, Linwood, published in 2009? Linwood is the board game without a board, says the marketing blurb on the website. I don't understand how this can be. Fortunately, the marketing blurb continues, telling us that right from their very first turn, players will decide how the land of Linwood will unravel. Will they rush off in pursuit of the hidden element stones that are part of this game, or will the players patiently wait as others find themselves lost in the dark and unfamiliar forest that unfurls? The primary goal of the game is to be the very first player to collect all four of these aforementioned element stones and return them to the starting tile with the secondary goal being, apparently, to not find yourself lost in a dark and unfamiliar forest as your opponent patiently waits for this to happen to you. Rising three spots to rejoin the top 10 in spot number 9 is Teotihuacan City of Gods by NSKN Games. In Teotihuacan City of Gods, each player commands a force of worker dice which grow in strength with every move that they make. While managing their workforce and resources, players develop new technologies, climb the steps of the three great temples, build houses for the inhabitants of the city, and raise the legendary and breathtaking Pyramid of the Sun in the center of the board. Teotihuacan City of Gods is a meaty little game with a striking table presence, a trend that NSKN seems to have continued since publishing one of their earliest games, Warriors and Traders, in 2011. In Warriors and Traders, players develop their country's technologies, production, and harvest and trade for resources, while also building armies to conquer new provinces and forts to defend their own. With so many different things to manage, Warriors and Traders focuses on strategy, involving no dice and no unforeseen events. Players must make their plan and execute it, and may the best managed province win. Retaining its spot at number 8 on the countdown this month is Scythe by Stonemaier Games. Scythe is an engine building game set in an alternate timeline branching off from the 1920s period in which players conquer territory, enlist new recruits, reap resources, gain villagers, build structures, and pilot monstrous mechanized war machines across the countryside. Another game in which players conquer the countryside, albeit in a much more peaceful way, is Stonemeyer Games' classic Viticulture, first published in 2013. In Viticulture, players find themselves in rustic, pre-modern Tuscany where they have inherited a meager little vineyard. They have just a few plots of land, an old crush pad, a tiny cellar, and three workers at their disposal. Now, each player has a dream of being the first to call their winery a true success. Viticulture boasts a respectable average rating of 7.7 .7 on Board Game Geek. But you know, it all makes me wonder how much higher its rating would be if player vineyards were instead maintained by Scythe's monstrous mechanized war machines. 
something, something to think about for hours. Catapulting 35 spaces to end the spot at number seven this month is our biggest climber, the upcoming new edition of Castles of Burgundy by Alea and Ravensburger. In the game, players control a small princedom, which they improve by building settlements and castles, practicing trade along the river, exploiting silver mines, and gaining knowledge from travelers that pass by. All of these fantastic actions are accomplished by taking settlement tiles from the game board and placing them into the princedom on their own player boards. The game ends after five rounds, with victory points being awarded for unused money, workers, and stocked goods. Now, the original version of The Castles of Burgundy was published in 2011. The 2019 version of the game includes 11 expansions, 10 of which were previously released as promotional items, and one that is absolutely brand new to this edition. This 2019 edition of Castles of Burgundy, brimming with all of these expansions, is scheduled to be released in August. Rising a spot from number seven to six this month is Arkham Horror, the card game by Fantasy Flight Games. Each spooky adventure in Arkham Horror, the card game, carries players deeper into mystery. There's cultists and foul rituals to be discovered, haunted houses to be explored, and strange creatures summoned by the Ancient Ones in order to destroy the barrier between our worlds. And if that's not enough, there's, there's even more stuff that happens. Arkham Horror, the card game, is based on the HP Lovecraft universe, which is one of the most recent properties that Fantasy Flight Games has either worked with or acquired over the years. One of the earliest being 1986's Britannia, which is a historical board game that broadly depicts the millennia-long struggle for control of England, Scotland, and Wales. The game begins with the Roman invasion of 43 AD, continues through the many struggles between the Angles, Saxons, Picts, Norsemen, Scots, Irish, and other tribes, and ends with the Norman invasion of 1066. Fantasy Flight's edition of Britannia was published in 2008 and went out of print in 2012. But just several months ago, on the game's forums, its publisher asked whether people would prefer a future printing of the game, and if so, if they'd rather it be printed as is, or for it to include a streamlined rule set that could play in just 60 to 90 minutes. Which brings us to this episode's top 10 hotness countdown burning question. This episode's question is, if you think the hobby board game audience has changed so much in the past seven years that the only way that a game designed way back in 1986 could stand a chance of selling in today's market would be if its rules were in fact revised to make it play faster and more streamlined. Or could a game from that era, the era of Britannia, still survive if, yes, it was printed exactly as it was during its original print run? In the comments, let me know what you think based on your own experience buying and playing modern board games. Let's compare opinions to see just how much the board game hobby community has changed or remained the same over the last decade or so. Keep keeping on in its spot at number five on the countdown this month is Spirit Island from Greater Than Games. Spirit Island is a cooperative game in which players command an island full of different elemental spirits as they defend their land from colonizing invaders with their own supernatural abilities. Now, I have to admit that the description of Spirit Island bears some similarities to one of the earliest games from Greater Than Games, Galactic Strike Force. 2014's Galactic Strike Force is a cooperative deck building game in which two to six players each control a ship and a crew in defense of the galaxy. But slow down. This time, players are not a group of benevolent elemental spirits or, or even benevolent space defenders. Instead, players are in the role of scoundrels, members of the galactic underworld who have banded together to defend their galaxy by whatever underhanded means necessary. Slipping down one spot to end the month at number four is Terraforming Mars by Stronghold Games. In Terraforming Mars, players run colossal corporations competing to transform the Martian landscape into a brave new world capable of providing humanity with a brand new planet on which to shovel snow until their hands freeze and cramp into little frostbitten fists. 
Terraforming Mars is a joint publishing venture between Stronghold Games and Frix Games. And Frix Games got its start in 2011 with the game Wilderness, in which players find themselves robbed and left dead in the middle of nowhere. Without proper clothes or equipment, they must then reach a civilized village before they die from hunger, or die from thirst, or die from exhaustion. Players have options in this game. But guess what? There's also wild animals lurking, mountains blocking the way, and a wide variety of very unpleasant diseases waiting to invade the players' bodies. It's enough to make a player feel like they'd have a better chance at survival by trying to terraform a distant planet. Oh. Perhaps that's where Frix Games got the idea for Terraforming Mars. Perhaps, but almost certainly not. After spending a month at the top spot notch, Wingspan glides down to land at spot number three this month. Wingspan is a competitive, medium-weight, card-driven, engine-building game from Stonemaier Games, in which players are researchers, bird watchers, ornithologists, and collectors, each seeking to discover and attract the best birds for their network of wildlife preserves. Another game in which players compete to get the most out of nature is Stonemaier Games' classic Viticulture, first published in 2013. In Viticulture, players find themselves in rustic, pre-modern Tuscany, where they I've already talked about this. How about the first bird? Arctiopteryx is the earliest undisputed bird. A weak flyer, it shared characteristics with its dinosaur ancestors. But fossils show that Arctiopteryx, like dinosaurs, not only had teeth, a long bony tail, and grasping claws on its wings, but also had a bird-style hip joint and feathers. Archaeopteryx has been out of print for 150 million years, with no plans for a reprint on the horizon. However, I did hear a rumor that Restoration Games did just pitch the idea to John Hammond, so we'll see how that goes. Reclaiming two spots to end the month at number two is Root by Leader Games. In Root, the nefarious Marquis de Cat has seized the great woodland intent on harvesting its riches. In retaliation, a collective of critters has banded together to fearlessly free the forest of feline fascism. Many people know of Root as the predecessor to Leader Games' previous publication, Vast The Crystal Caverns. But I was actually surprised to discover that Vast wasn't actually the first game designed and published by Patrick Leader. That distinction goes to 2013's Trick or Treat, in which players relive Halloweens of years past in this rummy-style game in which sets of candy are collected from across the neighborhood. Completed sets of candy confections can then be exchanged for points. What? Be careful, because there's a bully with an insatiable sweet tooth roaming the streets, grabbing all the candy that he can. Now, does Trick or Treat play as sweetly as Root? Well, that is impossible to say, because they are diametrically distinct games from one another, and I only propose the question because it provided a means by which to end this segment and move on to the next. And rebounding back into the top slot at spot number one this month is Gloomhaven by Cephalofair Games. What is Gloomhaven? Well, I suspect that it is a tactical combat RPG set in a persistent and changing world over the course of a campaign. Throughout each scenario, players will fight against automated monsters using an innovative card system to determine the order of play and what a player does on their turn. As groundbreaking as Gloomhaven has been, it wasn't the first time that Cephalor Games broke ground in the game publishing business. In 2015, Isaac Childress designed and published Forge War, in which players work as blacksmiths in a kingdom rife with marauding harpies, cursed dungeons, and fire-breathing dragons. Charged with gathering ore from the mines, players must purchase weapon designs from the market and then use the resources that they have collected to forge weapons for the questing adventurers to buy. Forge War underwent a second printing after its initial release, in which several typos were corrected, some of the artwork was enhanced, and the rulebook was revised to present the game's rules more clearly. So if you're curious about checking out Forge War as an example of Cephalofair's previous work, it's recommended that you keep an eye out for the second edition. And there you have it! There is your list of the top 10 most popular board games as of March 2019. For more board game countdowns, news, previews, and playthroughs, be sure to subscribe and turn on the little notification fun so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Till next time, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Board Game Geek. Thanks for watching and take care.
pilot monstrous mechanized war machines across the landscape. That's not a word. Or even benevolent. <laughs> Or that either. In spot number nine is, is, is rising three spots to rejoin the Teotihuacan city gods. Surprise! That's the theater for you.